Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. More Distress Ink re-inker content. <laughs> this time using Simon Says Stamps uh, Dandelion Messages stamp set. This came out in one of the monthly kits. I've done a couple videos using this set and I just had to use it again. I, I love dandelion images. I don't know why. They're just, I have a soft spot for them. So anywho, I have Canson XL watercolor paper and I have it in my Misty. I use my anti-static powder tool and then I'm inking up the stamp a couple of times with clear embossing ink because there's a bit of detail to it and watercolor paper has a bit of texture to it. And then I am coating this with Hero Arts White Satin Pearl Embossing Powder. Not only am I obsessed with Distress Reinkers lately, Hero Arts White Satin Pearl. It's just sitting on my desk. I'm not putting it away because <laughs> it's just, it just gives it that little extra something. You know, it, you know, on an angle, it looks like you just clear or white heat emboss something, but there's that bit of shimmer to it and it's so pretty. And as always, when I've got the stuff out, everything, why not do a second one? So I'm doing the exact same thing. Watercolor paper in the Misty, um, anti-static powder, inking up and stamping the stamp a couple of times with clear embossing ink, here where it's white satin pearl embossing powder, tapping off the excess, funneling that powder back into the container and putting the lid on because I am the worst. Like I've just turned that into a full on must do habit. Otherwise I knock things over and embossing powder is the, oh, I love embossing powder. I hate the feel of it on my skin. It just it mm, not fun and it's a pain to clean up especially black anyway anyway put the container off to the side with the lid on and then melted these with my heat tool until everything was smooth and melted and then i'm going to use the same palette and basically all the same colors that i've been using in the last several videos specifically um squeeze lemonade there's probably a bit of mustard seed mixed in with there uh, some carved pumpkin and some uh, candied apple. Those two kind of mixed together to create like the prettiest deep orange, which is actually very similar to Crackling Campfire, which I mentioned in my last video. I think it was my last video. I need to pull Crackling Campfire out as well because it's beautiful. And then I go into Seedless Preserves and I'm going to add like a bit of picked raspberry. And then I started adding some, I think it was like, well, what, whatever was in that corner like there's a bit of salvage patina and a couple other things but it was turning into kind of starting to turn into a muddy mess so i pulled out my salty ocean re-inker and that finished it off nicely normally i would tape something like this down however i'm planning on cutting this down like the pieces were larger than i needed i wanted them to be in the end like a narrower rectangle so i wasn't too worried about it but yeah it does make more of a mess not having them taped down, but also if I'm being totally honest, I'm not sure where my hardboard is. It's under something. <laughs> uh, the, like the most ridiculous things that like to, you know, grow legs and walk off. And it's, and I always find them in the most random of places in my tiny little office, you know, and more often than not, it's right in front of my nose. I don't know where it went. Anyway, anyway. That's all I did. Very simple. Like I had got everything wet first with clean water. That just helps everything move. And I'm just using one of my little flat tonic brushes, nothing fancy. And you just go back and forth and that's it. And, and always, it looks a little bit like a hot mess, but always let it dry. And then if you're not a hundred percent happy with it, or if you're like, you know, you're not the blend didn't work too well or whatever, splatter splatter fixes everything so but i was happy with this regardless but i was gonna add splatter no matter what it could have been like the most amazing background i've ever made in my life i'd still add splatter so i put a bit of perfect more perfect pearl powder into my one well that has perfect pearl powder and a bit of white gouache so now it's just like a mixture of it so it's kind of shimmery white which is pretty so pulled that out put the the backgrounds are completely dry at this point because if I did the splatter while they were wet, they would just kind of like blend and move. You wouldn't actually have splatter. It would just be like kind of splotchy little areas that, you know, meld into everything. So you let the backgrounds dry, then splatter them. I set those aside to dry. And then for my sentiment, I pulled out 
definite oldie but goodie. I have used this in so many videos. I'm pretty sure this was one of the first Simon Brand purchases I ever made, like seven years, however long ago this came out. This is the Painted Thanks wafer die. I have all of the painted sentiments. There's like Painted Thanks, paint, Painted Enjoy, there was Painted Happy Birthday, I think. I forget how many there were, but I got them all. And this Thanks one I've used a lot. I just it's one I reach for all the time. So I die cut it multiple times from black cardstock and then stack them together three layers like I like always do with sentiments so that it gives it that dimension that I like. And now those backgrounds are the splatter and everything's completely dry. And now I'm trimming them down. I wanted, like I said, like kind of a long rectangle. So I ended up doing like about three inches by five and a half inches once I got them um, trimmed down. So that trimmed off the icky edges, all that sort of a thing. And then um, for my card bases, it's Simon's Heavyweight White Cardstock. I'm going to use that Dandelion Cluster image again. And I wasn't 100% sure if this would work, but I was pretty sure because I've done similar things in the past and shown you guys. But I have Distress Oxide inks in the same colors. So Squeeze Lemonade, Carved Pumpkin, Candied Apple, Seedless Preserve, Salty Ocean. And I wanted all those colors on this one stamp. Well, these are large ink pads and that I've done it in some ways and shown it by holding like the, the ink pad on an angle and use just the edge. However, to get this many colors on this size of a stamp would be much more difficult. So I just pulled out my stash of um, sponge daubers. I've had these for eons, really long time. Some of my really, really old ones, the sponge actually disintegrated. I, I've heard other people mention that, like the really old ones from like two decades ago, you know? But yeah, I have a ton of these and I never use them because we have the fabulous blending brushes and all that kind of thing. So they are perfect for this. So I just smushed them really good into each ink pad and then use that to dab onto the stamp and it stamped great. So now I'm like, I might be doing this more often because I really like how this looked. And you, again, this could be, totally be a card front. Sometimes what I end up doing on the inside of the card, I'm like, oh, this could be another card idea for the front of a card. <laughs> so I inked it up with all those colors, stamped it onto the inside of both of these cards. And I've got this fun little gradient in the same colors as what I watercolored for the card fronts. And then I pulled another sentiment from the Dandelion Messages set. And this I just inked up with Simon's Intense Black Ink and stamped that. And again, like this would just be a very clean and simple card front. You guys know me. Clean and simple is not my thing. I struggle with it. I love the look of it. I just, if this was a card front, I'd be like adding the bling and more layers and, you know, more splatter. It needs more splatter, just like it needs more cowbell. But anyway, for the watercolor pieces, I used Simon's Big Mama foam tape and just applied that heavily, of course, so that um, these can be adhered. And this also kind of helps hold everything down because they are obviously warped a bit because I didn't tape them like I said because I can't find my, hard, my hardboard. But anywho, after I peeled off the backing I lined these up onto the card bases and then the sentiments I just took one of my little thin 3D foam squares and cut one in half just to put behind that thicker part of the S because I want the sentiment to kind of go over you know. So I did that and then just used craft tacky glue for the rest of the sentiment to adhere them into place. And as always, one could leave it here, but of course I'm going to add bling. I have some Studio Caudia. These are iridescent butterflies. I've used these in multiple videos. I don't think they're available anymore. I apologize. When I went to do the links, I realized they're not online anymore, which I was like, I love. But I, so I linked to the Studio Caudia iridescent tiny bubbles, which are similar. Like they're just tiny. And I've used those a lot too. And I love them. And they would work perfectly on a card like this as well. So either one, they're fabulous. Anything iridescent is just, you got to have the bling. So I sprinkled those fairly liberally onto these and then just adhered them into place with little dabs of craft hacky glue. And then I ended up pairing these with um, some metallic schoolhouse red envelopes. Just kind of pull out that little bit of red, because why not? So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post, and I'll have picture links in my blog post. 
Um, I'll have a supply list directly below the video as well. You can check all that out in the description box below the video if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs up and commenting. I hope you all are having a wonderful day and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.